All right, now step three is where we're going to get our z-score and our p-value. Now, the cool thing about this step is that you can let your calculator do all the work for you if you know how to use your TID-4 or your numeric calculator, but you do have to write down the formula for your test statistic, which is our z-score. So that's going to be the observed difference between our two samples minus zero. Where did that zero come from? That was the null hypothesis. Remember, we assumed there was no difference. Then we're going to divide by the standard error combined. This is another spot where we're going to use that p hat combined. We're going to use that p hat combined in here and here, right? Because we're saying that they're the same. That's the null. So shouldn't they all be the same anyways? That 0.356 is going to be used here and here against our sample sizes. So that's really important that you understand that that's where that standard error combined is used, which is very different than a test, or excuse me, very different than an interval, because in an interval we do not have that assumption that the difference is zero. Now, the cool thing is, if you know how to use your numerous calculator or your TID4 calculator, you can get your z-score and your p-value. All you have to enter in is the data, the number of men who have a college degree, 60, and the sample size, 200, and the number of women who had a college degree, 100, and the sample size, 250, and you'll get your z-score and you'll get your p-value. Now, one quick thing I want to make sure you understand is that your z-score could be positive if you subtract it in the other order. Remember, we had women at 40% and men at 30%. So I got a negative 10% difference because I did the smaller number first. It's going to create a negative, and that's why my z-score is negative. So when I get my p-value, I'm looking even lower than that z-score. But if I flip that around, which you're totally allowed to do, you get positive 10%, and then you're going to get a positive z-score of 2.202, and you're going to be looking greater. But regardless, because of symmetry, your p-value will not change.